So starting with the name of Almighty Allah, today in this video we will be discussing about hydrometer analysis and uh, I will be quick uh, uh, in explanation so that we, we will be more focusing on the excel sheet part. So let's start the hydrometer analysis as the hydrometer analysis is used to classify the fine type of soil means to categorize further that how much percentage of uh, clay and how much percentage of silt particle is in the fines. So that is why we use uh, the hydrometer analysis. So it can be performed to diameter of particle that are smaller than uh, 0.075 mm. So it is also known as sedimentation analysis. So what's the background? It's, it is it is based on the Stokes law. So what the, what is the Stokes law? According to Stokes law, Stokes law if we have a solution of uh, particles and if we know the velocity of the movement of these particles we can determine the diameter of this particle so on this on this basis uh, the hydrometer analysis works that according to Stokes law what we do is we prepare a solution of soil with the water then we monitor the movement or velocity of the soil particles then according to Stokes law we determine the diameter of the particles so let's uh, move ahead so this is the equation of Stokes law according to which if we have the velocity of the movement of soil particles given the density of soil particles and density of water and viscosity so we can determine the diameter of particles simply find this equation we can determine diameter d is diameter so on for further explanation we get this uh, on further simplification we get this ex uh, this uh, expression according to this expression these are the constants uh, specific gravity viscosity and rho of water which changes uh, uh, with the uh, uh, with the increase or decrease of temperature so and then the l over t is basically the velocity so uh, we further uh, simplify this as or uh, we represent uh, all this all these terms as k so the formula of diameter becomes d is equals to k under root l over t so now the next the scope uh, this is used for the uh, classification of fine type of soil it is also used uh, 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 in the part of specification of soil for airfields roads earthen dams and other soil amendments construction so this test can only be performed if the 10% or more than 10% otherwise the test cannot be performed. So these are the apparatus we need for the uh, performance of this test. The main thing is the dispersing agent. Why we need the dispersing agent? Uh, if we have the fine type of soil when we mix it with water it is a uh, possibility that the soil particles will uh, make clumps due to a reaction with the water because fine type of soil may contain cohesion so they will make a larger size of particles so if the particles are in the larger size then we cannot determine the the actual size of the particles so that is why we need dispersing agent so what dispersing agent uh, does is it neutralizes the soil and it prevents the soil to make clumps so that is why we use uh, the dispersing agent so uh, we have two types of dispersing agent if the soil is of uh, we have two types of dispersing agent if the soil is of uh, alkaline nature the mostly the soil is of alkaline nature or inorganic nature we use sodium hexametaphosphate because to neutralize an alkaline material we need a solution of acidic solution so sodium hexametaphosphate uh, forms acidic solution with water when we mix it with alkaline type of soil it, it neutralizes the soil and prevents the soil to make lumps similarly sodium silicate forms uh, uh, an alkaline or basic solution with water so it is used uh, in case if we have the soil of organ organic nature or we have acidic soil so this is the main purpose of these dispersing agents so these are the operators we need to uh, for the performance of the test next is the procedure in the procedure what we do is we take 50 gram of soil 
then uh, it should be oven dry then we uh, prepare the 125 ml of dispersing agent solution now allow the mixer to stand for about one hour transfer the soil mixer to the dispersing cup of the mixer uh, be sure to wash all the soil from the dish into the mixer cup if necessary add water until the cup is two-thirds full mix for about 10 minutes so we have to mix it for 10 minutes then transfer all the contents of the cup in 2000 ml cylinder uh, taking care not to lose any material add water to fill the cylinder to up to 1000 centimeter cube so uh, now using the palm of the hand over the open end of the cylinder or rubber stopper turn the cylinder upside down and back for a period of one minute to complete the agitation of the slurry take hydrometer readings at the following intervals so you need to take the readings at these intervals after four hours or 24 hours uh, you will terminate the test now uh, let's move on toward the most important part the calculations and then we discuss that how many corrections we require to perform the calculations so for here these are the uh, soil uh, which is having the sieve analysis results because we need the sieve analysis results because initially we uh, form the uh, gradation curve that was incomplete basically so we need to further plot the fine type of uh, fine uh, particle sizes so here you can see we have 61.162 percent of fine type of soil so we can perform hydrometer analysis so on this type of soil we performed hydrometer analysis and the yes, uh, viscosity uh, it's a viscosity basically uh, viscosity uh, of the water at this temperature is given over here in gram second per centimeter cube. Specific gravity of soil is 2.65. Uh, if we are given the specific gravity of the soil, then we will use that value. Otherwise, we will use the 2.65 value. Weight of the dry soil is 50 gram. Zero correction and meniscus correction. We will discuss this later. So we have this RA stands for actual hydrometer reading, T temperature, TC temperature correction, RC corrected hydrometer reading, GC zero correction, L effective depth. So what, what are these? We will discuss uh, later. So these are RA actual readings of the hydrometer with the passage of time, one minute, two minute, four minute and so on. Now first step is to find the corrected hydrometer reading. Uh, or uh, the temperature correction we need to apply the temperature correction why we need because the test is standardized at 20 degrees celsius temperature if the temperature is above 20 celsius or uh, less than 20 degrees celsius we need to apply the correction why because uh, why because uh, the temperature uh, temperature affects the specific gravity and viscosity so we need to uh, make it constant so that is why we need to apply the correction so for temperature correction we can use this formula minus 4.85 plus 0.25 into temperature so we will apply this correction uh, minus point four point eight five plus 0 0.25 into this temperature so it's minus 4.85 plus multiply by this so this is how we find out the temperature correction now we have to drag this one so now the next step is to find out the corrected hydrometer reading so corrected hydrometer in, in reading includes or actual minus zero correction so what is zero correction zero correction is basically see when we have the solution of soil plus water so we are we need to determine the diameter of particles of the soil but there is an inclusion or addition of dispersing agent particles so due to those particles we obtain additional value of the hydrometer so we need to subtract that uh, that value that is due to the addition of uh, the 
dispersing agent so in of the dispersing agent so that is why we apply zero correction so how we determine zero correction what we do we prepare a solution of dispersing agent plus water and we dip the uh, hydrometer over here and we see that how much distance it covers so uh, basically we just see the hydrometer reading that how much our zero reading is disturbed due to the addition of the uh, the dispersing agent so this is how we find out the zero correction in this case we have seven and temperature correction so let's apply the formula or actual minus zero correction we need to fix it because it will be same in all the columns by applying dollar sign plus temperature correction so this is how we find out the value write this to the whole column next thing is the percentage finer so percentage fine rc into a a is the specific gravity correction if we have specific gravity other than 2.65 then we need to apply correction otherwise there is a value of 1 for 2.65 and w is the weight of soil solids we can find the corrections from this table if we have specific gravity 2.55 we need to apply this correction 1.02 and so on so here we have r corrected here multiply by 1 in our case divided by ws is the weight of dry soil this thing and we need to fix it because this will be constant throughout so now i will be dragging this to apply the formula to all the this is percentage final we need to multiply it with 100 basically to convert it in, into the percentage value so yes so it's now 89.8 percent what does it mean it means at one minute time 89.8 percent of the particles are in suspended position and almost 10.2 uh, percent uh, particles are settled down 10.2 percent of this 61.162 percent basically so next is r corrected for meniscus so what is meniscus correction when we have the water and we apply uh, and we put the hydrometer uh, inside the solution there is curve we, uh, due to that curvature we uh, we determine a value basically so that should be uh, added to the actual reading so we have zero meniscus correction as one so we will apply this plus one we have the meniscus correction one so I will be one dollar sign over here or meniscus now the next step is to find out the l l uh, is basically the distance it is the effective depth or the distance that uh, this hydrometer travels so uh, this is basically it records the relative motion uh, with the passage of time particles try to settle and the heavier particles settles faster so uh, as far as the particles uh, to settle and the heavier particles settles faster so uh, as far as the particles uh, settle this hydrometer uh, moves uh, in the downward direction because of the decrease of specific gravity of the solution so due to the relative motion we can determine the uh, the movement of these particles we can guess the movement of the particle by the movement of this hydrometer uh, it is the concept of relative motion so we will simply find out the effective depth or this distance by this formula you can use the this uh, table as well this is more appropriate uh, method but just to save the time i will recommend you to use this table here this is our value for meniscus this value 
there are two R values. One is this R corrected value and one is this. So we will be using this value to determine the, uh, the effective depth R corrected. Against 51, you can determine simply against 51. Against 50, we have 8.1 and 50 to 7.8. We can interpolate between these two to determine the L value in centimeter. So we will simply, I'll be simply applying this formula. You can use this formula as well. So 16 multiply by R. Uh, sorry, 16 minus 0 0.164 multiply by this value or so. This is the uh, effective value 16.3 sorry 16.3 so so for the value of 50 8.1 and 15, you can see here the values okay so these are the L values now you can find out the K value from using this table and the K value can be found out from this table you can see the temperature over here specific gravity 2.65 and uh, the temperature is let's say 26 between 27 you can interpolate the value from 0 0.01 to 7 so I will be simply applying the formula for the K. The formula of the K is 30 eta over Gs minus 1. So I will be applying simply the formula over here. We have 30 multiplied by so viscosity. Uh, this viscosity, uh, this will be changed with the temperature. But here we have the same temperature. I will be using this value 30 eta. So, divided by Gs, so this is specific gravity, minus 1. Now we need to fix these values by applying dollar sign. Power one by two. So this is so this is how we found out k value. Now I will be dragging this to all the columns. So you can see zero point zero one two nine four against fifty uh, one value. So here you can see fifty one. Uh, the fifty one value and uh, the temperature is twenty seven. 26 and 2.65 almost the value in between these 0 0.01 to 79 so okay now we have found out the k value now we can determine the d value diameter k this is k uh, 100 l over t so we can apply this formula hmm. now we have the the k value multiply by L. we have this value divided by this value power 1 divided by 2 so this is how we find out the diameter of the particle we will drag it down now we have uh, found out the diameter of the particles for this type of soil so no the next thing is uh, we need to find out the actual percentage finer with respect to total fines in the soil so see here 89.8 percent of the fines are suspended at one minute time but we need the percentage passing or the actual percentage of fines uh, that are having this size of particles so we know that 
we have 61.162 percent of fine type of soil so how many uh, out of these 61 percent are having diameter this so for that purpose we need we will write the value over here this 61.6 percent and the diameter uh, of the particle is 0 0.075 so the value is 0 0.075 for this. Now that is why I um, I did not fill these uh, cells. So we have total these points. We need to find out the percentage um, according to this. So for that purpose, what we will do is we will do 89% of this 60. So I will be multiplying it by this and divided by 100 and see we have 54.924 percent particles that are having particles 0.924 percent particles that are having particle sizes as 0.0365 mm or smaller than that so no we need to fix this uh, value m45 because it will be remain same now i will be dragging it so simply we have found out these values so uh, you can see 32.29 percent are having this uh, uh, this diameter of the particle so this is passing and these are the diameter now we can replot the graph we can complete the graph we have uh, explained in this uh, this graph in detail in the previous video if you want to know how we can plot the graph of c1 analysis you can watch the previous video here i'll be and add over here along x-axis we have particles dia so i will be just selecting this column okay now the next thing is I will be selecting the percentage passing along y-axis and I will be naming it as hydro data. So okay, okay. So you can see the new graph has been plotted. So now it is the complete gradation curve. So this is how we can perform the hydrometer analysis and let's have a little bit discussion left for the hydrometer analysis so what is meniscus correction i already explained a little bit about it so uh, the upper level of the meniscus is taken as you can see here the this curve i was talking about so zero correction so due to the uh, soil uh, due to the uh, the uh, addition for the dispersing agent we have extra reading so our zero reading is displaced so these are some of the limitation of this test Soil particles are not spheres, but we assume, according to Stokes law, that the soil particles are sphere. The fluid is not of uh, infinite extent. Specific gravity of individual particles may vary. Turbulence caused by larger particles, as we know that the Stokes law is limited, uh, limited to the particles of uh, two mm. If the particles are uh, greater than two mm, then it will cause disturbance, turbulence. Uh, in the solution so Brownian motion uh, movement is occurred if the soil particles are very less so if the particles are having sizes less than this there will be a Brownian or zigzag type of motion uh, particles will not settle even after 24 hours so that is the limitation so I hope you like the video I, I was just quick uh, in the video just to was just quick uh, in the video just to make it a shorter video so i hope you like the video if you like the video don't forget to subscribe and 